everything good with you right now? Well, I'm smoking like a bitch. Which How I often do you smoke? Every day. Was it, were you smoking before all this happened? Oh hell no! Well, so secretly. Just, secretly. Doug Stanhope got me back on the bastard. You son of a bitch! I quit for like 15 years, and Doug Stanhope snuck. Every time I see Doug, I'd smoke one. That <sighs> bastard. He's got an evil spell on me. Oh, he's an evil little man. He's sober right now. No cigarettes uh -uh. for him either. Yeah. That he always says that. No, he's doing sober October. Are y'all doing sober October? Yes. Wow. Why didn't you ask me? I would have sobered up for it. Would you've? No. No. You wouldn't have done it. No, I want to do uh get fucked up. I want to go to retox. <laughs> retox uh, yeah. instead of detox. Yeah. That's what my boyfriend Johnny calls it. He How goes, It's time to retox. <laughs> How many cigarettes are you smoking a day now? Well, no, who's counting? You just keep smoking them? I'm smoking less than 10. Less than 10 is not bad. Yeah. Not, it's, it's not well, as good as zero. Well, I was smoking a lot. See, I'm cutting it by 10 every week. Oh, okay. So So next week it'll be down to one oh, okay. a day, all week. One a day is not bad. And I'll see how I deal with it if anyone dies. This whole thing has been completely fucking insane and you really? caught it yeah i know uh. i don't have to tell you but you caught this madness this outrage culture right at the peak i think yeah, you I you hit peak outrage culture thank you well people <laughs> didn't give a fuck if you were making a joke G didn't give a fuck if you had no idea that that lady was black didn't give a fuck what your mental state was didn't give a fuck if you were on ambien didn't give a fuck if you were drinking didn't give a fuck if you One sincerely thing learned, apologized. Joe. Oh, go ahead. I do want to talk oh, seriously about they, that. They, but they didn't care that you mm -hmm. you sincerely apologized and did not didn't mean to offend. You were cracking a joke about a woman. It it was funny how they've mischaracterized it and lied about it and added words to it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I like to talk about the tweet. But uh, yeah, I seriously apologize to all whom I inadvertently offended and because they were offended for like it it wasn't even what they say they were offended because it didn't say that no but they think that I tweeted a, said she looked like uh, you know somebody and I never said anything about her looks it was a political tweet and it's just proof of how um, everybody's under mass mind control because they took a um, and of course, I'm always interested in that. You know, you know that I've talked mass about mass mind that. control. Yeah, I think MK a lot of it's self-imposed. That's what I think. I think yeah. people are under the wave of self-imposed mind control. I don't think it's like there's anybody pulling. You the mean strings. you think you can get out of it? No, I don't think anyone's pulling the strings. I don't think this you is by design. No, I don't. I don't think it's by design. I think really? people are caught up in a wave of fear and paranoia yeah. and political correctness. And I think one of the reasons why atta they attack someone like you is, first of all, you're wealthy and successful and famous and beautiful. You are beautiful. Thank you. And one of the best comics of all time. Oh, thank you so and much. You're also uh, you're you're an an easy target. You're yeah. a, a white woman. Well, I don't identify as a white woman. What do you identify as? I, I identify a, as a Jew. Well, there you go. Yeah. And this is what you thought this woman was as well. What is her well, name? Well, she again? looks like my cousin Sharon. She looks just like my cousin but it wasn't nothing to do with how she looks that came after my tweet but the, uh, the no, looks but, but wasn't it about it the was planet about of the, the work of her hands what she engineered in iran and i'd been on there talking about the the i call it a, a woman's revolution in iran for years and speaking to people in iran about it and what it means to uh the, the women who are second-class citizens there and uh, so if you take that one tweet out of like probably I tweet a lot you know so it's you probably do, you go 400,000 you get on tweet no storms. I don't go crazy I stay crazy <laughs> I admit it I mean what the fuck they're like you know what you've said you're crazy for years and you know what you're crazy well yeah I said it for fucking yeah. years well it's also one of the reasons All of us why you're are so crazy. funny yeah. All comics are fucking nuts, though. I don't, at least I don't wash my keys like some. Wash I know their some keys? guys, they, they got to wash their keys five, six, seven times. <laughs> 
before they can go on stage. <laughs> What's his name? Oh, I'm so mm. bad on names. Chris Farley. I always ask comics, you know. I ask them, what's what's your secret number? What's yours, Joe? I don't, I don't know have a I secret ask. number. You don't have a number? No. You don't have to do something a number of times? You don't have a number? No, I don't have a what's number. What's your birth date? 8 11 8, what's that, August? August. 8 11 67. You were born in 1967? Yes. Jesus F. Christ. Um, I was in the my I was in the Utah State Hospital when you were born. What were you doing? Giving birth? No, I was in a mental institution. Woo! That was my first hospitalization. It you, lasted for nine months, and it was the Utah State Hospital in Provo, where the Osmonds are from. So mm. I was always a big Marie Osmond fan. the The mental health aspect of this conversation is is an important one because. Here's my take on this. It's extremely important. It is important. Mm -hmm. And yesterday was Mental Health Awareness Day. Yes, I know. And I was quite aware of being mentally healthy yesterday as I was smoking. <laughs> <laughs> if someone and has cheese. All I eat is cheese. If someone has uh, an injured leg, you don't expect them to run marathons. If someone has, uh, you know, something wrong with their liver, you don't expect them to process food correctly. You don't blame it on them. But if someone has a mental health issue and they do something erratic yeah. or they say something that's inappropriate and then they apologize for it. Or if they're a comedian. Or if they're a comedian. And you, you've had legitimate, real, diagnosed, treated mental health issues, trauma-related uh, uh, issues. There you go. How do you like that? Like maybe. it. It's a little. I can do the I can alphabet. Do you do better. Can you? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. For whatever reason, people mm -hmm. want to pretend that this is a deliberate act by a calculating person who yeah. is just being an asshole. And that's yeah. not the case. You're not, not an asshole. This, not at this time. <laughs> I have been an asshole but you on weren't, Twitter. But you weren't. Time, you know? That's not what you were doing. No. But, I, I was talking about Iran and the women's revolution there. And how, uh, how, and it's always been because, you know what, I had my DNA done because I wanted to know. And I am of North African ancestry. How much? Um, it's like a very small percentage, but it was something like 25,000 years ago they left um, North Africa, which is kind of Syria, and um, they went to Lithuania and um, Russia and uh, some y Europe. Did you do like 23andMe or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it just answered so many questions for you know, why I feel this yearning towards that part of the world. But I do, you know, and the, especially the geopolitics there are something that have always intrigued me. And I have always attempted to use my voice to, um, you know, support all, all the people there. Well, it's a fascinating So part it was, of the world. you know, this one tweet was like about, it was about, I mean, it's actually a genius tweet if you really fucking knew. What did you say? What exactly did you say? So let's find the tweet, Jamie. I'll tell you if it's the artificially rendered. There's an artificially rendered one? Yeah, there's a lot of them. What, people distorted what you actually yeah, said? Yeah, first it was racist Roseanne, and then about a couple weeks later it was disgraced comic Roseanne and her racist tweet, and then after that it was disgraced comic and her offensive racist tweet because there's all these hoops you got to jump through you know they're never done punishing you well th like we we're saying before and the podcast all my friends started, said don't apologize to social justice warriors because that's the kiss of death that's fucking chum in the water blood in the water you know it's definitely a little bit of that but what, yeah. I, what i was saying before the podcast to you is i i don't I don't really what I really think happens is they find a target yeah. and they don't care if it's a viable target. But once the target right. gets greenlit, they go after you until some new target comes along. Until they some always new distraction. Have to have a target, yes. for sure. And it's recreational outrage. They find it you, is. they attack you, and they go after you and they and try to distort your position. And even if they don't know what the fuck you said. Right. And obviously they don't. That's what kind of cracks me up. It's like, they, look at this. Look what they're saying it meant. And, you know, I'm not going to bow down before them and say you were right 
and they want me to. But they weren't right. I'm right. I wrote it. Bitch. Bitch. So I know what I meant. So you don't fucking get to tell me what I meant. But they don't care. I this know. This is the thing is they don't want to look at it rationally and say, oh, here's a woman that has Bingo. a history of mental health problems. She was on Ambien and drinking. And she says something that is slightly irrational. But given your explanation of it. Well, you well, didn't Joe, even you know that always, she was black. You and Doug both always think all my tweets make no sense. You've been saying that for <laughs> fucking years since I went on Twitter. You're like, her tweets are just fucking straight up crazy. Well, you have you, some crazy tweets for sure. Uh, I don't think they're crazy. You just don't get them. Well, maybe if I was uh, in the same mindset as you, I would get them. Yeah, but obviously no one is. But when I say crazy, I think they're <laughs> I know fun. I don't think like other people. Right. I know that. I've always known that my whole life. I'd always test other people, see what they were thinking. Like, as even as a kid, I'd be like, you know, but I, I try to fit in. They go, let's play Barbies, you know, and I'm like, oh, fucking, I don't want to play. And I'm like, okay, well, but let's have Barbie be a resistance fighter that paratroops <laughs> into, um, you know, into the hidden lines of the German thing and save all the Jews. And they'd go, you have to be her cousin Skipper. And then they'd hand me the Skipper doll. I mm. always had to personify Skipper, and they got to be Barbie. I didn't even know Barbie had a cousin. Yeah, Skipper, she has little tiny tits. <laughs> and I resented that. Because I always had very large pendulous breasts since I was four, four or five. <laughs> 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 I did. I don't, I don't think or look like other people. I think I'm an alien, really. What planet do you think you'd be from? Um... Well, somebody told me I was from Pleiades. Do you know anything uh, about that? Yeah, that's the people that call the Art Bell show. They would always say that yeah, yeah. Pleiades. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, they say round faces are from Pleiades. See, mm, you got a round face. That's uh, what I told you. I might be. I don't even go by what people look like, except for I do look at the shape of their head, I have to admit. That's how I classify mm. people. I classify people my own way because I don't think like everybody else thinks. I take a person's shape of their head, and that's the group they represent to me and i have noticed that the dutch have the largest heads the big people the dutch have pure square not all of them of course but some of them you know the average height for a dutch person is like six feet tall i know yeah, huge, for the women huge folks yeah vikings yeah vikings yeah i love all the different peoples of the earth because they all have a variety of foods that I enjoy. So I like to, you know, I don't just mix with one kind of person in my real life. I mix with all kind of people and, you know, because I'll go anywhere for a free meal. <laughs> but I know, but I love, I love cultures and I love all people. That's all I want to say, you know. Well, I would never, I'm not that person. So You're not, you're not a racist by any stretch of the imagination, but you are a person that My will son make said fun I'm a misanthrope. I'm a misanthrope. You are a misanthrope, but that's. I am a respectress of no man or but, woman. But most comedians. Yeah, have we're all like that, right? Some misanthropic intentions or uh, You have to hate behaviors. all people the same. But you definitely have to mock and make, I mean, it's part of yeah. the job description. Yeah, you, know, you, you mock, mock and make fun of, and you you look for things that are irritating about everything. No shit, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's part a of the job. Stuff. Not only that, that was part of your character on your show. Yeah, it was part of the reason why ABC wanted you back. It's part of the reason why the show became such a giant hit in its return. I mean, it was a fucking huge hit coming right out of the gate. Yeah, twenty eight million people. That's a lot of fucking people. And it was today. number one every episode. Yeah, that's a lot of people, and yeah. a lot of that was because. People love this aspect of you. But as soon as you get labeled a racist, everybody throws their hands up and goes, whoa, I didn't know she was racist. Yeah. She's racist. And they uh -huh. don't care about nuance. They don't care about the details. They don't care about Ambien. They don't care about alcohol. When I called you on the phone, it was the first thing that I One asked One thing you, I've learned, Joe, if you're going to take an Ambien, do not, do not drink a beer. Always only drink a wine Yes. with Ambien. I have a good friend of mine who is one of the nicest, most respectful guys you ever want to meet. He woke up in Germany on a plane covered in his own vomit with the police standing over him, asking him if he knew what happened. 
He wound up getting arrested. They brought him to the, the jail in Germany. And, they, and he's a CEO of a large company. And they went over things with him, and they said, what happened? What do you remember? He goes, well, I remember taking an Ambien, and oh, then, then I went to sleep, and then I had, uh, I guess I had a beer at some point in time. Yeah. And they go, okay, stop. This is what happened. And so they describe how he was hitting on the stewardesses and trying to start fights with men in the cabin. And oh, he's being his real all over self. It wasn't his being his real <laughs> self. He was on Ambien. Yeah, I know. He it is, distorts things. He's the nicest guy. If you knew this guy, you would never in a million years believe that he was capable of anything remotely like this. And the German people actually let him stay in the country. They let him continue his vacation. They're like, okay. They forgave him. You promise not to do that again? He goes, I'm never fucking taking that shit again in my life. Yeah. And one of the things that I said to you when I called you up, I said, what were you doing? Well, and you told me you were on Ambien. And I said, okay, <laughs> we'll stop right there because I know quite a bit about that because I've had personal experiences with friends that have had real issues with Ambien. I had a bit I did in my act about a friend of mine who literally made a meal while he was on Ambien, yeah, cooked, I've went to the supermarket, too, right. went, got food, cooked Well, look it. at Tiger Woods. That yes. He was on that, and then he'd go driving off in the golf cart to meet some chick, you know. Yeah. Gee, and that I don't understand where people say they have sex on Ambien. People say that's a big uh, thing that people take Ambien to have sex. I don't even know how they could stay. I, no. I guess they don't stay awake, but another <laughs> part of them wakes up and their sex part comes out. That's all I can figure. I've never taken it. I'm terrified of this. Don't stuff. ever take yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I get no. I have no problem going to sleep. I've never had a problem. I going do, to sleep. but you know what I found is THC. They sell it down at. Uh, the uh, dispensary, and there's one for sleep at night. Yeah. And um, I've been doing that, and I've, it, I've been sleeping through the night. Uh, when I was taking the uh, sleeping thing, the sleeping drug. Ambien. Well, I don't want to say it because we don't want to get sued. It's like candy, man. You don't want to say it three times. You'll get sued, not me. By saying Ambien? I bet you. I don't yeah. think they give a fuck. Did you see People their tweet, though? That they shit. said. Yeah, I did see that tweet. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, you know, I had Hamilton Morris on the podcast, who is a, a drug expert, yeah. and he he writes for Vice and does uh, mm -hmm. pieces for Vice. And he went. And I just after did a your, piece for Vice. After your incident, he came on and went in great detail about how there, that that is something that happens to people. That well, they have That's no nice. idea what the fuck no. they're saying. It's called a hypnotic. That is the classification oh. of drugs that it, it falls under. And people do all sorts of involuntary things when they're on there. No, it doesn't just make you say racist things. But you didn't say anything didn't intentionally say anything racist. racist. No. I the, said the way people decided about the work of Valerie Jarrett's hands. And I also was referencing my very favorite movie. So if we could talk about how fucking awesome that movie, Planet, Planet of, the, of Apes. the Apes. Great fucking movie. Also, it's the definitive people uh, get your, come on, people now, smile yeah. on your brother. It's like, come on. It's like the hundredth monkey. Is that the thing? Is that the name of it? Yeah, that's what it is. The hundredth monkey on the typewriter. What is the, they no, 10,000 monkeys? What is it? How does that work? That if you have a certain amount of monkeys, no, it's the hundredth monkey that changes everything. Right. If if a if a species does something ninety nine times in a row, the hundredth time it's gone into their DNA. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they evolve to a next level. Hundredth monkey effect. A hundredth yeah. monkey effect is a hypothetical phenomenon in which new behavior ideas. Claim to spread rapidly by unexplained means from one group to all related groups once a critical number of members of one group exhibit a new behavior yeah. or acknowledge the new idea. Yeah, uh -huh. critical mass. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing is, a lot of people put pictures of that woman well, right I next to the lady. Well, I didn't put no picture. I, I understand. I said the picture was put up after my tweet. I understand. But and I didn't have nothing to do with that picture. I didn't say she looked like anything. I, seriously, I'm not that fucking shallow. Okay, I never talk about nobody's looks unless they're, like, thin and blonde and I'm jealous. <laughs> but, you know, and youthful now. But, or whatever. But wasn't there another tweet that you made a long time ago? Mm -hmm. about who is that other woman susan rice yes yeah where you said she has giant swinging eight balls yeah that she's a man well giant see let me explain balls. that now because this is regionalistic regionalism i'm from utah and all the girls in utah when we got married and our we heard our moms do it too it's always where's your ape they go what's your ape doing this sunday 
It, and he's like, oh, he's watching football. All oh, good. Let's go out to lunch. You know, it, it's all, all of the men were all apes. That's how it is in a breeder culture like Salt Lake City. Breeder culture? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> that is a breeder, breeder, breeder culture. culture. So it's like, yeah. where's your ape? And there's like, man, your ape has big fucking swinging ape balls. I give him that. You know, it's a regionalistic thing. And, uh, you know, so I used it and apologized. But 